All right, so this video, we're going to be talking about one shots. And the point of a one shot is to catch a transition from positive to negative and just the initial transition. If we would have some normal code written just like this, or we have the start button and an output, all right, that output would stay on as long as that start button is. However, if our start button here was a one shot, it would be on only for a single loop of the code. All right. Now, we will come back to that in a minute, but the whole point again is one shot, just for that, uh, to catch the transition, a positive to a negative or a negative to a positive, or a rising and a falling, depending on which programming language we deal with. Now, to, for this demo, we have some tags created. I've got a stop, a start button, a few memory bits, um, and then two outputs, just so I have some, some options to use while we're doing this. So, all right, so. Again, we're looking for that transition from a positive to a negative or a negative to a positive. So from a zero to a one or a one to a zero or true to false and false to true, depending on which option it is you choose and which language you like to speak. All right. So we need to be, have some way to be able to see that transition. And you will never actually see that on the computer. Again, with my loop, with being as simple as it is, anything I'm programming for these demos, they're all gonna be one millisecond loops, which means one of our outputs, our tags, is true for one millisecond. You will basically never, ever see that happen on the computer screen because it updates every like 300 milliseconds. So you might get lucky once in, a, in like a blue moon and see it, but basically you're never going to see that actually go true. All right. So to put a one shot in, how I like to do it at least, is I like to just change my make to it. So I have a start button here with a make, and I'm just going to double click, and we're going to go down to P. And this is a positive transition. So we're going to go from, we're looking for that transition from a zero to a one. All right. And you will notice now that on the screen, we now have some red question marks that we need to put in. And this is what I like to call the one shots memory. If it doesn't know what happened the last time around, what the, what the state of that input was, the last loop of the code, it has no way to know whether there is a transition. So we need to have some place to store the previous loops state of that input. All right. And that's what that bottom is. So on an input one shot, we have our actual input that we're checking for that transition for. And on the bottom, we have the place to store the last loop of codes um, state for that specific input. All right. Now, again, if I were to download this and run this right now, you would never actually see the output turn on because it happens so stinking quickly. All right. So for my purposes, I'm going to go ahead and throw a counter in here just so that we have something that will be able to actually capture that difference. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and give this a preset value of 10, and we can go ahead and download this now just so we can actually see what is going on. So I now have my code loaded up. Let me go ahead and put this in run mode. And if we look very carefully at my video, you'll notice every time I flip the uh, zero button, that goes true. Notice that blue line between the one shot and the counter. You never actually saw that go green. So it's never like the counter is ever actually getting power, but yet we are counting up. So every time I go from zero to a one there. All right. Now you may be going, well, that's how a normal timer works. And yes, you would be arguably correct there. So, or not normal timer, normal counter. So let's go the opposite way. Let's make this a negative transition. So you don't want to count when something hits the sensor. You want to count when something break or leaves the sensor. All right. So this would be like a car going over um, an inductive sensor underground. So that way, you know, when someone has left the red light, left the parking garage or whatever it is. So now you can see every time I go from my positive state, notice we do have a green, li uh, green light going on on the um, PLC. So as soon as I go to zero, boom, that counter counts again. All right. That's so not on the positive, not when I turn it on, but when I turn it back off. All right. So overall, one shot inputs, very simple. I mean, overall pretty simple to program. It's just wrapping your head around how they work and when you want to use one. All right. So you can see that is working overall flawlessly. All right. Now this checks a single input. All right. And if we were to go through here, and if I were just going to throw some fun in here, let me go ahead and put my stop button before this. All right, let me go ahead and download that. 
For this counter to count, the stop button has to be true before the start button is, before that negative transition. All right. So again, I have to let me turn my sunglasses on. For my counter to count, I have to have stop on true, and this has to go to a negative transition. If I do it the opposite way and I go, all right, start triggered and then stop triggered, it's never going to count. All right. So this is checking one very specific input. All right, which is both a good thing and a bad thing, depending on the situation you're in. So it's only checking one very specific item. It's not checking all of the logic before it. No, it's only checking that exact item. All right, so we're only looking for that transition on one input. Now we can do something slightly different here. And if I go ahead and do this, we can have an output. All right as a one shot. So if you notice, we do have our P and our N in our output as well. So I'm going to go ahead and make a P this time. Actually, let's stick with the N. Make, why not, right? I said N computer. All right. So notice we still have our two different tags on it. All right. We still have our last run state on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and use memory two there this time. And then on my top, I'm going to use my output or my M output. Yeah, M output. All right, and then we're going to still watch the start button here. And let's go ahead and delete that. Go ahead and to our M output here. And then let's put another counter in just so we can see how this actually compares. So uh, CTU. Oh, I want to count up. Whatever the name is, is fine. Again, we'll make this just a random value overall. And we can go ahead and download that. All right, so we have our code written. And you will notice that both of them count whenever I flip it off. All right. So this one single input up here is the same as both of that on this rung. All right. Now, having using the output as the one shot does give us some slight benefits. So it does allow us to actually invert the logic of it. Imagine you want to do a one shot that would stop something. All right. It would stop the conveyor belt or whatever the case is. Well, if you want to have a stop button, you need to have that basically normally closed. Well, the one shots up as an input are always going to be normally open. So they're normally going to be makes. So we can't use it as a stop button directly. We'd have to do something like this, where we're going to have multiple inputs on here that we can then have an output, and then we can take the inverse of that. So I could make this a breakdown here instead. And that is a wonderful capability for us because it allows us to do the opposite of a one shot. You know, it's still detecting that that transition but it's breaking the logic instead of making the logic. So there is a time and a place for using an output like this as well as an input. You can always use an output instead of an input. So it's kind of like a square is a, rect a rectangle is a square, but a, a square isn't a rectangle, all right? Um, a square can qualify, a rectangle can be a square, but a square can never be a rectangle, all right? Um, so it's that same kind of logic here where it works one way, but you can't always use it the opposite way. So it's always better to, to uh, assume the worst and use this instead. It is, yes, it is take up another rung of code. It does take up more programming memory because look, we have another input and you know all other fun stuff. However, it is a more um, useful item to have it like this because we can make it a make or a breakdown here. So one shots are absolutely wonderful they allow us to do a lot of capabilities for part detection and things like that especially when you want that to only be true for a single loop of code we don't want to constantly be counting something a one shot is a great example of that however it also comes with its downsides so it's a little bit more complicated and those types of things so that is how you put a one shot into siemens code have a good one